My name is Hugo Villarreal. I'm the Small Business Liaison with the City's Economic Development Department Small Business Office. And today I'm going to cover the steps needed to start a business uh, here in the city of San Antonio in regards to uh, licenses, permits, and registrations. Um, first, I would like to uh, go over some of the services and assistance that I provide to uh, anyone who's looking to start a business here in the city, looking to grow, expand, or relocate their business to the city of San Antonio. Um, I provide information on licenses and permits needed to start a business here in the city of San Antonio, as well as the, the regulatory requirements uh, that may apply to a particular type of business operation. Um, I am the first point of contact for, again, anyone looking to start a business in San Antonio, uh, and as well as the point of contact for referrals to different uh, uh, programs and services available for uh, small businesses in the area. Um, we uh, discuss, I can provide information on and guidance on business startup issues, um, discuss types of legal business structures. Um, if you're going to be conducting a business out of a commercial location, I can uh, uh, take you through the steps uh, of the construction and site development process, uh, as well as information on sources of capital for your business. Uh, and as well as, again, referrals to our other business resource partners, such as the Small Business Administration, SCORE, uh, UTSA Small Business Development Center, uh, Women's Business Center, and many other partners that we work with when uh, looking to help businesses uh, expand and grow here in the city of San Antonio. Um, I also can provide information on workshops and business seminars that uh, may be available uh, in the San Antonio area. Uh, and if you're looking to um, do business uh, with the city of San Antonio in terms of uh, government contracts and opportunities, I can also assist you with, with uh, getting registered as a vendor uh, under the city's uh, CVR system, the contractor vendor registry. Uh, we can also, I can also help you get certified as a small minority woman owned business uh, and also go over any small business programs or incentives and fee waivers that may be available depending on your uh, type of uh, business. Um, and um, I'm also a, a, I can also assist you with solving uh, uh, and troubleshooting any type of municipal regulatory issues or situations that you may be encountering as you try to establish your business here in the city of San Antonio. And I also serve as an ongoing resource uh, and support uh, as you, your business grows and you're trying to expand in San Antonio, um, I'm available to connect you, to talk with you and connect you with other resources uh, and additional opportunities to help you um, grow your business here in the city of San Antonio. Um, so the first thing that I'd like to uh, go over is um, the business license requirement. So uh, as you are looking to start your business here in the city of San Antonio, um, the, the main question that I get asked pretty much every day is where can I get a business license? First of all, um, the city of San Antonio does not have a business license. There is no general business license requirement in San Antonio. The type of license or permit needed is going to be based on the specific type of business that, that you're starting. Um, and uh, so sometimes uh, uh, there may be a license uh, permit that may be required and sometimes there's no license or permit needed. Uh, again, depending on the product or service that you plan to offer. I have also listed in this uh, uh, slide our website our San Antonio.gov uh, small business office where you can uh, go in and see what other programs and services are available as well as a um, uh, there's a listing where you can request uh, a, a an appointment uh, an online consultation with me um, and so you can go to www.sanantonio.gov forward slash SBO uh, and you can take a look at all the resources and services available to the small business community here in San Antonio. Um, and also uh, note that the uh, Bear County uh, this also does not have a business license. Uh, and so if you're looking to do business in unincorporated areas of Bear County uh, and that's outside uh, in, in within uh, within the county, um, you could, uh, uh, you know, there's no business license, but you can also contact the Small Business Entrepreneurship uh, Department with Bear County and I've listed the uh, link to their um, website where they can also uh, provide resources and assistance if you're looking to start a business within Bear County. Um, 
And also, uh, Texas does not have a business license. So there is no business license requirement uh, to start a business uh, in San Antonio or in, in, in the state of Texas. Um, if you're looking for information on any specific licenses or permits that the state of Texas may require, I have listed the, the website at www.texas.gov uh, and the state of Texas does have other state licenses that you may need to apply uh, for your particular type of business operation. Now, I can um, also uh, guide you to that process. Um, you can, uh, you know, when we connect, uh, uh, we will go over all the specific local, county, state, uh, and federal regulatory requirements in terms of licenses and permits. And I will be, uh, I'll identify any specific license or permits that you may need. But if you want to do a little more research on your own, um, you can check out those uh, websites that are listed on this slide and connect either with our city office in Bear County or Texas, uh, state of Texas, and you can do a little research on your own. Uh, again, I help you with that. Um, so no business license requirement uh, in the city of San Antonio or Bear County in Texas. Some of the licenses and permits that the city of San Antonio uh, 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 has in terms of, of uh, depending on the type of business that you're starting, um, it has to do with, uh, for example, uh, if you're planning to start a business uh, that has to do with animal care services or animal uh, pet shops uh, uh, or any type of, of, of a kennel permit uh, or pet grooming, uh, those are uh, uh, the animal care services department. Uh, and so anything with animals and pets, uh, or animals or pets uh, or the sale of animals, um, uh, the Animal Care Service Department has uh, licenses and permits that may apply depending on, on how you're going to run your business here in the city of San Antonio. Uh, there's also uh, uh, other licenses through the Code Enforcement and Services uh, uh, Division of Development Services Department that has to do with, uh, for example, a donation container permit or if you're going to be selling uh, used mattresses. Uh, uh, there is a germicidal application permit that is needed in order to be able to sell used mattresses uh, in the city of San Antonio. Uh, if you're looking to do some business uh, that deals with scrap tires, there's a facility license. Uh, if you're going to be transporting tires in the San Antonio area, uh, there is a permit for that also. And anything having to do with metal recycling, uh, any facility is going to be recycling automotive parts uh, or metals. Uh, this uh, code of personal services also has a license uh, that's required in order to operate those type of entities here in the city of San Antonio. If you're planning to do any business in the downtown area, uh, the Center City Development and Operations Department has several licenses and permits uh, that may be required, uh, such as uh, uh, for a mobile food vending uh, unit that wants to operate within the downtown area, uh, there is a permit. Uh, also, if you're going to be uh, vending uh, selling products in the Riverwalk area. Uh, there's a permit for that, a sidewalk cafe permit, uh, and also a private property vending permit. So if you're looking to do some type of business uh, uh, activity in the downtown area, um, the, there are licenses and permits that, that may apply. Uh, if you're looking to do anything related to videotaping, film production, photography, and city parks uh, uh, and, and, and city public areas, uh, there is a permit for that. So any type of film, any type of photo, type of activity, filming, uh, they, there is a permit that's required in order for you to provide that type of service uh, or conduct that activity uh, in the city of San Antonio. Uh, other licenses and permits uh, related to activity related to remodeling, uh, renovations of commercial or, or residential properties, uh, there are a number of, of, of licenses and registrations that, uh, uh, that are required uh, to, be, uh, to be, you have to obtain those licenses through the city's development services departments. And as you can see on the slide, there are a number of, of uh, registrations for uh, residential contractors, uh, home improvement contractors, uh, a house mover license, um, a plumbing uh, requires a state license and a registration with the city, uh, mechanical uh, state license registration, uh, you're, if you're an electrician, uh, uh, then you also have to register your state license with the, uh, the city's development services department. Um, so there's a number of, of licenses, permits, uh, or registrations that, that are required uh, uh, to be obtained through the city's development services department. 
So anything dealing with construction, there's probably a license or registration that's gonna be required uh, for you to be able to run your business here in the city of San Antonio. Uh, generally anything uh, uh, in terms of operations, food services, um, small food vendors, the city's metropolitan health district um, um, has a number of that are needed in order to be able to prepare and sell food to the public um, and are required to be obtained through the city's uh, health district. Um, and also um, anything that deals with, uh, with uh, um, uh, swimming pools, uh, 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 there are uh, care facilities permits, uh, if you're gonna be doing any type of rendering uh, of, of meats and, 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 and fat rendering type of operations. Uh, the health department has a permit for that. Um, and so there, there's uh, anything related to food production uh, and anything that's gonna be sold uh, uh, to the public uh, will generally require a license, a food service license uh, or permit through the city's uh, metropolitan health district. Um, other licenses that may apply, uh, there's the fire department has a number of permits that are needed. Uh, for example, a fire alarm permit, uh, a sprinkler permit, uh, a, a storage tank permit. So again, depending on the type of operation that you're starting, uh, there could be uh, one or more permits and licenses that may apply to your uh, business activity. Uh, and so fire department also has those permits. Uh, solid waste management generally just what has one. If you're going to be hauling any type of solid waste uh, or solid uh, material through city streets, uh, you will need a solid waste hauler permit. Um, when it comes to the police department, they generally regulate the public transportation uh, and they have a number of uh, permits that may be required depending on, on the specific activity that you plan to do, such as uh, uh, a group cycle permit or a taxi cap. A permit, a tour service, charter, a limousine, a horse carriage permit, um, and, and pedicab permit. So anything related to transportation uh, that you plan to provide here in the city of San Antonio, there's, uh, there's uh, more than likely uh, you're going to require a permit for a transportation type of business. Uh, and then uh, last finance department. Part, a number of licenses offered through the finance department that deals with, with canvassers or uh, individuals that are going door to door selling a non-food tangible item. Uh, they generally will require a canvasser license uh, or a food peddler license, or if you're gonna be selling, uh, again, non-food tangible goods and, and items to the public from a uh, commercial location as a mobile unit, um, you will need a truck peddler license uh, through again through the finance department and if you're going to be uh, selling alcoholic beverages uh, you're going to start a bar or a restaurant that's going to sell alcohol uh, to the public uh, the, there you will need a license and uh, you're going to have a coin operated amusement machines in your in your location um, there's a license for that too so that's just an overview of, of the variety of licenses and permits that the city of San Antonio offers. Uh, and again, I'll be glad to, to uh, discuss the specific uh, situation of your business, a specific activity, and I can uh, provide you with a step-by-step -step, uh, guide uh, and, and listing of what you're gonna need to do in order to obtain those permits, again, at the local, county, state, and federal level. So I'm just covering what the city of San Antonio more or less uh, has in terms of licenses and permits. There's a lot of other permits at the state level and maybe some uh, federal, but uh, we can discuss that. Uh, if, when you contact my office, we will go over those requirements uh, for you. Let's see. Well, the next uh, section, the first thing that, that you need to know when starting a business is that you have to um, uh, basically um, decide what type of legal structure you're going to have. Um, for your business. And so if you're starting, uh, if you're thinking of starting a business as just as an individual, as a sole proprietor, or if it's going to be a partnership of, uh, of two or more individuals to conduct this business activity, um, you will need to, first step you need to do is to register the name of your business. Uh, it's also known as a DBA. To register uh, by recording an assumed name certificate with the office of the Bear County Clerk. Uh, it's that the process, is a, that step is something that is, uh, you think of it as, as basically giving a public notice uh, to let anyone know, anybody who wants to know what the, uh, who you are, 
and what type of business you're starting and how the public can contact your 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 business and so it's not uh, a a, uh, a a process where you're going to own the name it's just a notice to the public that you're uh, looking to start a business in in bear county uh your name the name of the business and how your business can be contacted and so that has to be filed with the office of the bear county clerk i am listing the uh, contact information at this point because of the uh, 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 pandemic situation that we are going through right now uh, it will be best to contact the Bear County Clerk's Office to see what the, what the situation is in terms of whether or not you can just uh, walk in to do uh, your registration or you will probably need to set up an appointment uh, in order to be able to uh, uh, do that process that step of registering your business name with the office of the Bear County Clerk. So uh, please give them a call, 210-335-2223 for more information on how to register the business name. And I've also listed the, the website link uh, so you, you can get more information and um, to be able to obtain the proper documentation in order to record it with the office of the Bear County Clerk. Again, sole proprietorship, one uh, partnership is more than one. It's just a, a, a simple partnership uh, register the name of the business as the first step that you need to do to take in order to um, get your business uh, uh, formally uh, started here in the city of San Antonio. If you're thinking of starting a, a business as a, in terms of the legal structure, either as a corporation or a limited liability company, an LLC, uh, the first step will be to file articles of incorporation for, uh, for the corporation or articles of formation with the office of the Texas Secretary of State. Um, that's the first step uh, for uh, corporations, limited liability companies, or any other type of legal, such as uh, limited liability partnerships or professional corporations. Um, you are required to file through the Texas Secretary of State. Uh, even for nonprofit uh, organizations, uh, are required to file uh, articles of formation or incorporation uh, with the Texas Secretary of State. Generally it costs $300 to file uh, the paperwork and, and obtain a, a confirmation that your entity has been created. Um, um, and you can do that online. Uh, the I usually uh, uh, suggest to the clients recommend that they contact the Secretary of State office at the number that I've listed there on the, on the slide. And, um, and then uh, once you get a little more information as to how to file, you can go to their website and file the paperwork online. Uh, so all this is uh, what the state is, is handled at this time uh, uh, via a website through an on online system. Uh, again, it costs $300 to file. So corporations and limited liability companies or formal legal structures, uh, the first step is, is the Texas Secretary of State. Uh, if you're filing uh, as a sole proprietor or say simple partnership, the first step is registering a business name with the office of the Bear County Clerk. The next step uh, once you create it to inform your entity is that you will need to apply for what's known as an employer identification number or EIN with the uh, Internal Revenue Service. And this is uh, basically a federal ID that uh, you will need to, to have uh, assigned to your specific business uh, operation uh, in order to be able to, um, uh, first of all, let the IRS know that you're going to business, you have an entity and that you're the responsible party for that business activity. Uh, but it, most important is going to be needed in order to be able to open up a bank account uh, or deal with other suppliers, even to be able to uh, obtain uh, merchant services uh, to get paid electronically. That number is going to be needed. Uh, you need to obtain that number in order to uh, uh, be able to transact business with other entities. Uh, and be able to obtain business services with banks uh, and other business organizations. Um, there's no fee to apply for the employee identification number, um, but uh, you will uh, need to do basically do this online. The easiest and best way to, to obtain this number, apply for this number, is to go to the IRS website at www.irs.gov, and then on the search box, just search EIN. Uh, generally, the first result will indicate uh, uh, the link to be able to register or apply for your employer identification number. Uh, click on that box, go through the process. It doesn't cost anything, uh, 
uh, once you provide uh, information to the IRS about your business, type of services you provide, uh, the contact the person uh, for your business, the IRS will assign that federal tax ID and it will connect that to your business activity. You can also download a form called SS4 and you can fax it uh, at the number listed on the slide. Uh, however, it's much easier if you just go and apply online. Much faster, much easier. It takes about 15, 20 minutes to go to that process. So now you have your legal structure uh, created uh, and now you also will have your tax, federal tax ID, your employee identification number. Um, at that point, you basically in business. You have created the entity and now you have your employer education number. You're, for all intents and purposes, you are now an active business entity. Um, the next step um, that will apply to pretty much all entities that are conducting business activity in Texas is um, a sales tax. Um, so a Texas sales and use tax permit uh, is, is generally uh, required to uh, have a permit and also to collect a sales tax depending on the product you plan to sell or uh, the services you plan to provide or if you're going to be leasing or renting equipment or leasing any type of, of, of other products or services, uh, you more than likely will have to charge a Texas sales tax. And so you will need to apply for a Texas sales and use tax permit uh, with the Texas Comptroller of Public Accounts. Um, the easiest and fastest way to do that is to apply online through the Comptroller Texas uh, website. Uh, it takes again about 15, 20 minutes. Um, and what you to do um, is to, first of all, you want to call the Texas Comptroller. This is what I recommend to all clients. Call the Texas Comptroller at the number listed there, 800-252-5555. And um, verify and confirm that your activity, uh, it is it's going to be a, a, uh, a taxable type of activity and that you will need a sales tax permit. Uh, um, and then uh, uh, there's uh, the next step is, is they will let you know how to apply. Uh, and more likely they'll tell you to go and apply online. Uh, you can also connect with the with their office located on San Pedro Avenue, but uh, really uh, this, uh, during this pandemic, it is best to, to do everything online. There is no plan for this uh, sales tax permit. However, you need to make sure you have your structure already formed. Uh, uh, also, your EIN number has to, to uh, already be active in order to apply for your Texas sales and use tax permit. Okay, so now you have your business structure created, you have your employee identification number, now you also have a Texas sales and use tax permit. Perfect, you, you are now in business and you're able to, to provide services or at least be able to say you're almost ready to open your business to the public. But for all intents and purposes, you now have a business entity. Okay, so now, Another component that tend, uh, tends to apply uh, for uh, anyone looking to start a business in San Antonio is if you're going to um, have employees. And if you're going to be an employer, uh, you need to uh, register. If you plan to have employees, you need to register uh, with the Texas Workforce Commission. Um, and the, the Texas law uh, basically requires that if you plan to hire anybody that you must register with the Texas work in days of becoming subject to the Texas Unemployment Compensation Act. Uh, there is a form called C1, uh, Employer Status Report, that you're going to need to submit to the Texas Workforce Commission indicating the wages that you're paying. Um, and then there is going to be a, a, a tax rate base that the Texas Workforce Commission will, will, will let you know what your, what your tax base is. Uh, and then you will pay a percentage uh, based on the salaries uh, and wages that you're paying to your employees. Okay, so if you plan to have employees, contact the Texas Workforce Commission either by the phone number or go to the website uh, that I've listed on the slide uh, and find out about the requirements to, to uh, register as an employer and report which is, uh, it relates to uh, the Texas uh, Unemployment Compensation Act. This is a time when you need to also connect with your uh, uh, bookkeeper, your, your uh, certified public accountant, or whoever's going to be handling your taxes uh, to be able to uh, organize uh, this, 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 uh, your books and be able to report 
uh, not only your income tax to the to the IRS Internal Revenue Service, as well as reporting um, uh, this type of information to the Texas Workforce Commission. So it's also going to be critical. It's going to be very critical that you uh, connect with your with a, a tax professional and and um, discuss the, this uh, requirements and make sure that the books are set so that you're able to meet the requirements at the state and federal level um, and not get in any trouble with the taxing tax agencies, uh, such as the IRS, Texas Comptroller, uh, Texas Workforce Commission. If you're planning to not have employees, uh, but more, more or less you're going to be having or using independent contractors, then um, you need to know that um, um, the IRS uh, uses 11 main tests and, and the Texas Workforce Commission uh, uh, use, uses uh, 20 common law factors to evaluate the relationship between you as an employer uh, and the individual individuals you, you are going to uh, contract uh, for services. Um, and so by default, anytime you pay anyone, they're considered to be employees until they have, it's been determined that they're not employees, but independent contractors. Uh, and so you just can't say, I'm gonna treat somebody as an independent contractor and that's it. Uh, uh, the rules basically say as you pay someone, you're, you're, it's an employee unless you meet certain requirements to indicate that and to show that they're not actually employees but independent contractors having their own business, having their own business name, uh, uh, federal tax ID, everything else that's required for small business. And then of course, having some type of a contract uh, uh, agreement, an independent contractor agreement indicating that, that there's no employer-employee relationship. Um, if you need to, to have uh, uh, the entities uh, uh, figure this out for you, uh, IRS has a form called, uh, called SS8 that you can complete and turn into the IRS. And based on that information, the IRS can tell you whether or not whoever you plan to hire will be an employee or independent contractor. The Texas Workforce Commission also has a form called C8 that you can provide the same information and they will then use their 20 common law factors to, to determine if uh, in fact someone is uh, an independent contractor and not an employee. It is highly, highly recommended that if you're gonna have either employees or independent contractors that you connect with a labor and employment law attorney uh, to discuss the, the specific situation as uh, it relates to your um, business and whether or not you're gonna be having employees or independent contractors and how to best fit them to make sure you don't fall on the wrong side of the law. Uh, and so, yes, I always recommend that you hire an attorney and an accountant as you start a business and have those, those discussions and talks with, the, with those professionals. Another, another item that comes up uh, as you start the business, uh, another component is uh, Bear County property taxes. Um, the, the Bear County Appraisal District requires that anyone conducting a business activity uh, within the county and is using Or, uh, all that, uh, uh, all those inventory of all the equipment that is used for that business activity uh, using personal property rendition form, and you uh, may be required to pay a business property tax related to the value of all that equipment that you're now using to create income. Okay, with, uh, and so again, this is another topic that you want to uh, discuss with your tax professional. Uh, to make sure that you're filing the proper paperwork with the Bear County Appraisal District uh, by the specific date. I believe the, the, the date that you have to report this information is April 1st uh, of every year. So once a year, you have to report your personal property uh, uh, to the uh, Bear County Appraisal District. So again, another topic that you want to discuss with, a, with your tax professional. Um, and I've listed the contact information there, including the website, and you want to see the, what the form looks like. Again, the, it's called Personal Property Rendition Form. Go to the website, www.bad.org. Look for form and familiarize yourself with the requirements. It's not that complicated, but it is more an inventory uh, form. Uh, where you indicate the value of the, of the property and submit that once a year to the Bear County Appraisal District. So now you are in business and you're now, you have your business name, your tax ID, you've got your sales tax permit, you, you, your employees or, or independent contractors or no employees uh, and know about the business property tax. Now, another topic that, that comes up is business location. So, and when it comes to business location, you're either gonna be operating in a residential area or, or location or out of a commercial uh, uh, area. 
Uh, and so in residential, uh, when it comes to residential, we're talking about your single family homes, multifamilies, duplexes, apartment buildings, condos, or some type of a co-op type of residential uh, a facility. Uh, and, and so there are a, it's, it's regulations that I'm gonna cover in just a moment, but you're either starting out of a resident or out of a commercial location. Sometimes an individual tell me, well, but I'm going to my office, gonna be in my car. Uh, you're gonna to have to have uh, an office uh, somewhere, a physical location, a physical address. So it's either gonna be a residential location or a commercial location. So it depends on the type of business that you're starting, uh, but uh, you're gonna to have to pick uh, one, <laughs> one location, residential or commercial, and it cannot be your, your vehicle. Um, your vehicle is just uh, where you do your work and go from point A to point B, but you still have to provide a physical at your business location. So when it comes to operating a business out of, out of a residential area or out of your home, for example, um, there is a, 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 a home occupation uh, uh, definition or, or a code that indicates what you can and cannot do when operating a business out of your home. But generally, you can have a, a, an office in your house uh, and provide the conduct your business activity as long as you don't do anything that bothers the neighbors creates odors or emissions, you're not manufacturing anything that, that requires uh, uh, any type of assembly. Uh, you cannot use your garage for any type of, of uh, or, or your you know, storage area uh, for any type of this activity. Everything has to be done within the, the living area of the home uh, and, and, the, and that part of your business cannot occupy more than 25% uh, of, of the living area of your home. So essentially, yes, you can have an office, you don't need to register, you don't need to apply for a license, no inspections required, as long as you keep the activity within your home uh, and you don't do anything that attracts attention that you're conducting a business activity uh, uh, for the most part and you don't, you don't do anything that bothers the neighbor, you can have your office there. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that you also need to check uh, if you're not the owner of that property, for example, you're re leasing a home or, or renting an apartment, uh, you need to check your lease agreement to see if there's any type of restrictions that, that could hamper your uh, using that uh, uh, home for any type of business activity. So always, always check your lease agreement, check with, your, with the owner of the property uh, and, and make sure that whatever you're doing in that property uh, uh, does not violate what, uh, any type of lease agreement that you may have in terms of being able to occupy the home. Uh, uh, is, uh, uh, if you're within a neighborhood association here in San Antonio, which there are many neighborhood associations in the San Antonio area, uh, generally sometimes they have uh, some um, information or restrictions, uh, uh, possibly prohibitions on running a business out of uh, within their neighborhood association area. So check your neighborhood association, see if there's any type of restrictions. Um, for any questions related to running a business out of your home, uh, you can call uh, Code Enforcement Services uh, by dialing 311 or calling the main number 210-207-6000 and ask to speak with a Code Enforcement Officer uh, just to uh, be able to get a little more information as to anything that may or may not apply to your business activity. Uh, and again, I can also help you with that information uh, and, and provide you with a specific uh, uh, home occupation call and I can email it to you or I could, uh, you know, we can just go over the, uh, the requirements. Uh, but if there's ever gonna be any issue or problem, it will be with a code enforcement inspector that will show up in your house and tell you that somehow there's a violation of, of what you can and cannot do out of that property uh, under the home occupation code. Uh, but again, as long as you don't bother anybody, you keep it within the home, uh, then, and you just have an office type of operation, you, you won't be able to do that within the San Antonio city limits. If you're gonna be operating within a commercial location, such as a restaurant or some type of a medical office or, or, or a beauty salon or anything where you're gonna be uh, having to uh, locate in a, in, a, in a commercial building, the first thing you want to check is the zoning you want to look at what the permitted for that particular building or that particular area and see if your activity matches the zoning or is permitted under the zoning uh, uh, designation for that uh, particular building or, or building that you may be using. Uh, there may be some restrictions or it may be a prohibited use, but the first thing you wanna check is the zoning. Uh, and in the next uh, slide, I'll give you the contact. Uh, you'll see the contact for the city's development services department 
uh, where you can ask for a preliminary plan review also um, for zoning information. Uh, but the first thing you want to do anytime you're going to be going into or looking to do a, a business out of a commercial location is that you want to know what the zoning uh, designation will be for your specific type of business operation. A bit of occupancy is basically the ability to uh, occupy the building and be able to offer your services uh, to, to the community, to your clients. Uh, and every building, every commercial location has to have or it has a certificate of occupancy. When it was built, it was issued, it was given a certificate of occupancy uh, and it indicates what type of services are, can be offered out of that location based on, on the business. Uh, and so you also wanna check with the city's development services department as to what is the current certificate of occupancy and what's currently permitted. And if you need to apply for another certificate of occupancy or you can use the existing certificate of occupancy. For example, uh, if you're gonna be operating a food service uh, a, a restaurant uh, or a to-go place, um, then maybe what you're, if you're going to buy uh, or lease a property that was already a food service operation, you may not need to apply for a new certificate of occupancy. You, just, you may just need to update the information uh, listed on certificate of occupancy, and then you'll be able to just uh, uh, continue to use that certificate. Or maybe you're taking over a, a facility that used to be some other type of operation uh, and then you may need to uh, apply for your own, for a new certificate of occupancy. That, to, that generally will uh, trigger inspections uh, uh, for, uh, to make sure that the building is, is safe uh, to, to, to be in and also to be safe to be able to provide services to the community. And the inspections could, could be, include building uh, inspections, electrical, mechanical, plumbing, fire, and health codes and inspections that uh, will then uh, uh, indicate if the building uh, is, is, is safe to occupy and is safe for the community. Uh, so until you have a certificate of occupancy, you cannot really open your doors to the public. So again, zoning is, is very important uh, to look into. The first thing you need to do is zoning. Second thing is look at the certificate of occupancy. Uh, the third thing is, is, is uh, in this process is that you also need to look at what type of uh, building permits may be required if you're looking to renovate, construct, demolish or, or alter the interior of the building um, or expand the access of the building will generally building permits that will need to be required uh, in for you to be able to do that work in that location that you chose to start your business. Um, other issues that, that may uh, come out out of this, uh, this process of, of figuring out what you're going to need for a commercial location has to do with planning and that is the planning has to do with the uh, 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 determining where the utilities are going to be uh, uh, placed uh, within that, that empty lot, for example. Um, and there has to be a plat already recorded with the development services department uh, indicating exactly where all these sewer lines and electrical lines and, and any other uh, telephone lines uh, have, to be, uh, have to be in place for that type of operation. There has to be already a plat recorded, otherwise you cannot do anything with that property as to what is you're gonna need in order to be able to satisfy the requirements for that type of operation. Uh, and also occupant load. Uh, occupant load, uh, you need to see uh, exactly what, uh, how many people can be in the building at any one time. And as you know, with COVID-19, uh, right now with the pandemic, uh, there are restrictions as to how many people can be in a building, but you need to look into that to make sure that it matches your business activity. Uh, and that is not going to be an issue uh, in terms of being able to, to successfully operate our business uh, here in the city of San Antonio. So that's basically the basic uh, uh, components uh, that as, as it relates to a commercial location. Uh, I always recommend uh, to all my clients uh, that for them to schedule a preliminary plan review uh, with the, the city's development services department. And uh, they're located here in the downtown, a little bit south of the downtown area. Uh, I've listed the plan review number, so you can call and schedule a, a commercial consultation uh, with a plan, re with plan reviewer. Um, and you can also call the main number uh, at 210-207-1111 for additional information on zoning or building permits. Uh, and then I'll be able to get a little more information, schedule a, a commercial consultation, which is free. Uh, it's a free service. Uh, and they will take you through all the steps needed to apply or change zoning, apply for a certificate of occupancy, the, the, the site development process, uh, any building permits that may apply. And at that point, you'll have enough information to be able to work with your contractors or work with the, uh, 
uh, owner of the building where you're going to be leasing the space and, and discuss as to who's going to do what, who's going to be in charge of, of fixing anything uh, prior to the lease, or if you're going to be responsible for making any changes and, and hiring your own contractors. Uh, so before you look for a commercial location, follow, you know, connect with the development services department, see what's all the requirements, what the zoning, and then based on that information, start looking for a commercial location and you should be able to have a much more positive experience and be able to identify uh, uh, potential properties that best fit your business uh, operation here in the city of San Antonio. Again, I can assist you with that process. We can discuss your, your plans, your ideas, and I can give you a very customized of, of you need to take. And I can also be uh, an ongoing resource as you go through this process. I will tell you exactly what you need to do where to where to go, who to call, what to say, what to do in order for your plans to come into fruition and for you to be able to start your business here in the city of San Antonio. That is the end of my presentation. Um, ho I hope that uh, this presentation has given you a better uh, a view, a better understanding as to the study to start a business here in the city of San Antonio. Um, I can be uh, contacted at, uh, you know, at I'm 1-0-207-3903. You can also uh, send me an email requesting uh, a, a, an appointment or a consultation or time to meet, uh, time to, to meet online um, or over the phone. Um, you can just send it to hugo.villarreal at sanantonio.gov. And of course, you can also go and visit our website, www.sanantonio.gov forward slash SVO. And there is a, a link where you can request a, a, a meeting, uh, a consultation uh, with myself. Um, then I will then use that information to contact you and we can then discuss your specific uh, uh, vision, the specific type of business operation and we'll tell you exactly what you're gonna need to do. I'll email you some inf specific information also. And again, I'll guide you through the process and if there's any issues or problems, uh, I will be able to, I will be glad to, to, to facilitate any type of assistance in solving those, those issues um, here in the city of San Antonio. Um, so this presentation has been for all of you. I thank you for your attention uh, to this uh, presentation. And if you need any assistance uh, in regards to starting, expanding or growing your business here in the city of San Antonio, or if you're going to be uh, looking to locate from another state uh, even another country, please give me a call. I am the first point of contact for anything that is related to starting, uh, growing, expanding, and relocating your business here in the city of San Antonio. I'll be happy to provide you with all the information. I will tell you everything I know, and I will be very happy to help you uh, expand your business and create wealth uh, here for San Antonio and for, all the, for the benefit of all the residents in the city of San Antonio in surrounding areas uh, here in Bear County. Thank you and have a great day.